Welcome back, everybody, to Mystery Quest, where we are continuing to play Call of Cthulhu and the scenario Fish in a Barrel. Previously, with the barrel left in flames and a mysterious alien cockroach wreaking havoc, Harry O'Brien, in a blind panic, was lost to the night. Now our investigators look to track down their friend and follow up leads garnered from the barrel's accountant into the origins of the juice. Now, with glowing symbols appearing on their bodies, it's a race against time for them to avoid a grisly, chitinous end. So the, the three of you are in, in this car. Yeah, Harry O'Brien is long gone. Okay, well we're away from the chaos and the monster. Should we check on old Shay? See what we can do for his jaw. So you're covered in blood. They're yeah. both sat in the front seat covered <laughs> head to toe in blood. You're covered in blood. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm probably covered in blood. <laughs> so weirdly, because Ben's character has no blood around his mouth, whereas your character, all blood around his mouth. So you kind of, we match. kind of match. I think Eleanor's sort of completely covered in blood, but there's still the cigarette sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a line across your like cheek yeah. where it protected you. <laughs> How are you feeling, darling? What happened in there? Uh, do you have a cigarette spare? <laughs> <laughs> I'd light one up and one of my fancy Ooh. French ones and hand it to you. Ooh. I'm going to need something stronger than a cigarillo after that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What maybe, did we just see? Maybe we should all go and have another <laughs> drink of some juice. <laughs> I don't uh, think they're letting us back in there, darling. <laughs> I know just the place. I went through the books. I found out where the juice comes from. I found their suppliers. We might be able to get to the bottom of this if we check out the factory by the docks. I mean, now's as good a time as any. <laughs> I'm worried he's going to punch one of us. Yeah. <laughs> he's a loose cannon. <laughs> You all right there, Shay? Do you need, do you need a bandage? Do you um, need some painkillers? Yeah, I think I need something stronger than that. I think, I think, um, I think we're just gonna have to get this done. Let's go to the place. Okay. And like, as you are sat in the dark, mm. there's no proper streetlights around here. You're down a sort of um, Rothback alley, and it's only kind of after you've lit this cigarette and you're having this conversation that you realise that. The car's actually fairly well illuminated. The runes on all of your bodies are beginning to glow. Oh. They're glowing. They're beginning to glow brighter. Enough that they are casting light. The, it's almost like oh, you have man. a lantern on inside in your car. This is bad. We saw, we saw Pike upstairs. He started to glow, and then that monster came out of him. What if that happens to us? What are we going to do? I haven't got a handkerchief big enough for my whole body. <laughs> <laughs> what have they done to us? Have we drunk some kind of insect eggs? This is horrendous. <laughs> oh. Maybe they have a cure at the factory. Maybe they know what, what did this to us. Maybe there's an antidote. Yeah. I say we go there. Go to the source. The source of the juice. <laughs> I don't see what choice we have. At least we could have one last drink for whatever it is. Eats us from inside. <laughs> we don't know how much time we have. If I start to thrash and shake, I want one of you to put me out of my misery. I don't want to explode like Pike did. Do you promise? <laughs> promise me you'll do it. <laughs> Oh, darling, I'll do it now if you don't stop. <laughs> Pull yourself together. <laughs> don't worry, none of us are exploding from the inside. Don't worry. Where, where do you where think this Harry... together, like a union. Where do you we think need ha to unionize together. <laughs> <laughs> We've nothing to lose but our chains and the world to win. <laughs> What do you say, Che? Should we, should we put him out of his misery now? Or? I love the power of unionization. That's that's how you'll overthrow the bug the bug monsters. Uh, yeah, I love I love this. I'm so 
I'm in. In a way, the bug Good monsters guy. from beyond time and space are not unlike the capitalists. <laughs> <laughs> Leeching away on the hard work of us common men. <laughs> I like to think that you are you're ranting about this as you're driving along. <laughs> I'll not let them have the sweat of my brow. <laughs> it's hard work, these ledgers. <sighs> yeah, so are you guys heading towards the, the factory? Yes, it's worth seeing where Harry may have gone. Give me a group luck roll. Whoever's got the lowest luck, the if you can roll. Okay, group luck roll. Boom. 28, that's... Ooh. Just, I've got 28 luck. Oh! <laughs> Perfect. You drive around for a little bit, looking for Harry O'Brien, but you've basically given up hope at this stage because he ran off screaming into the night and then was clearly like hiding from you, trying to evade you. And so you yeah. sort of give up and you begin heading on your way towards towards this warehouse because you have no better idea and you genuinely have this this feeling of like time is important but mm. not just that you're running out of time that there's too much time there's they're out of time that's what pike said out of time and you're driving down the road and heading towards this uh, the dock dock mm. district and uh, there's no street lights around here there is just this glowing in the middle of the road that as you get closer you realize it's harry o'brien um he's he's lost his jacket his shirt is ripped wide open mm. and he is he's glowing like a street like wood mm. walking in the middle of the street incoherently mumbling and he is walking towards where this factory is mm. I'm getting out of the car. I got this. Harry, my best friend. Come with us. It's okay. We got you now. Can I, can I roll something to come around from my insane break, or am I fucked now? If you can give me a psychology test or something, you can... I'll let you snap <laughs> Here's him out. Here's where it pushes me over the edge, and my brain just juice, pops. Juice, <laughs> juice, juice, <laughs> juice. Uh, Watermelon flavor. <laughs> Can I uh, tune the radio to like a jazz channel? They have, they've already picked up this this smash here. <laughs> They're already playing it. Um, so viral. Uh. Yeah, give me give me a dice roll. I think you have psychology as a skill. Fifty nine. What is your? Uh, I don't have psychology though. I'm only a ten. You're trying this, but he is. Oh no. He doesn't. He doesn't really fight you. But he is just shambling along, and he's he's mm. muttering, and you begin to make out the words that he's muttering. We give ourselves to the key and the gate. Our sacrifice opens the door. All become one. All become dust. Our souls shall bridge the present and the past. And he's saying that over and over again, and you remember from the vision you had mm. earlier on the night, that's what you guys were all saying. And he is just muttering that as he just kind I of slap him. lopes along. Step out of it, Harry. I'm gonna dodge it. You're better than this. <laughs> <laughs> Counter attack. Boom. Uh, yeah. I'll I'll say if you can give me a power roll. 73. Not powerful enough. Look, you can't <laughs> catch me. You can't defeat me, and you can't talk me out of it. This is just my destiny at this point. I get back in the car. You're like, um... <laughs> he just gets back in the car. <laughs> oh, that's pointless. It's like He's close gone. encounters, you know, where they just start walking towards the mountain. Shaping mashed potato oh, yeah. into hills and things, yeah. Uh, is there any sort of, like, blanket in the car? Probably, yeah. Mm, would you have a blanket in your car? Oh, it does get cold sometimes. It does, it does get really cold. So actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think like in the, the trunk of the car, you, you'd you have a blanket. Also, it might be one of those cars that doesn't have a roof, you know, like those old timey cars. Ooh, very cold. It's kind of, it's kind of snowing. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Because Harry O'Brien, he looks, he looks really cold. Uh, mm. Wearing half a shirt. He's lost one of his shoes in the process as well. Can I get out of the car and sort of try and put the blanket over him? and just sort of be like, Harry, darling, come on, get in the car. Enough of this. I feel like you could, I think you could maneuver him into 
Especially if we keep the car going in the direction he wants to go in. So you definitely get the feeling that he's a little resistant at first, but when he realizes it's still going in the direction that you're going, mm. is way more happy to be involved. Okay. Yeah, we'll pull the car up to him and then sort of roll along and he can climb in while we're moving. Yeah, you're able to get him in, you're able to get him bundled up in this um, in this big blanket and kind of dry him off, warm him up a little bit. You are heading in the direction of this of okay. this place. Off we go. I'll share the information with Shay. So I guess he hasn't seen it yet. Oh, what is this? Take a look. It's all very strange. Hmm. So it's paperwork and these runes you can see now they have formed the exact same patterns that you can see on those papers that uh, you had. They're very similar to but way more well defined than the ones that were on Pike's body that they have mm. almost fully slotted into place. That they are explaining this transaction. Mm. They look like this piece of piece of music or this well written language that has its entire own meaning and it is almost fully kind of settled on your body and these things are has the paperwork changed or no. is that still the same no, no the paperwork looks exactly the same mm. it's just uh, the things that are on your body are now almost entirely entirely complete can I like decipher anything from the runes on this looking at it if you give me a language roll, I want a real, real tough one. I would need this to be very good. I'm going to juice it. Ooh, use the juice. Ooh, Ooh 18, which is oh, exactly an extreme success. Wow. Didn't even need the juice. You would piece this together in that this is, this is like a, this is a code. This is a, passphrase a a key something that when it is completed something will open up mm. and then it will be done and its its purpose will be used it's some kind of rich ritualism you don't want to go too blase and say feels like a magic spell something that has been prepared for a long time and that it is almost entirely complete with a tiny bit more formatting once the words are fully in place together, its, it's job will be done. Okay. Mm. You can have three, add three to your Cthulhu Mythos, um, which is a stat. Normally, uh, people don't ever really get a lot of it. It's the only skill that you start out at zero of, but I would say you can glimmer more in and you do have some Cthulhu Mythos now. Nice. It's not going to come up, um, but it's always nice when people get some. <laughs> Isn't there some weird thing where your sanity can never be higher than your Cthulhu Mythos or some kind of... Yeah, like yeah. The more you learn about it, the crazier you Yeah, can. yeah. Like the way they describe it is the, uh, your sanity is a glass of water mm. and the more Cthulhu Mythos you pour in and water is your sanity, mm. uh, you can never refill the levels of water in this glass. Yeah, too um, much mythos in it. It's like, ooh, that's too, uh, you know, too mythos much mythos. on it. It's <laughs> like oil. It's like oil. Yeah. <laughs> it was more like mercury. Mercury ooh. would make sense. <laughs> you pull up alongside this warehouse. Mm. Uh, it's the address that you were you were looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, the there's, a, on. there's a big courtyard. And yeah, you can see there are some lights on inside. There's a small um, lamp on the front of the building. Mm. Um, these huge, gigantic double doors uh, with a smaller door kind of inset into these double doors. And this courtyard where there's um, like a really big truck out there, uh, piles of crates and boxes. And mm. up the side of this building is sort of like a steel staircase that looks like it goes onto some kind of mezzanine up there. Mm. Uh, inside this warehouse. So you're basically, you're at the place where you mm. want to go. Right, knock on the front door. <laughs> it's a bold plan. <laughs> I think we can pretend to be from, I, I, I have a plan, I have an idea. Is I it, think before you get into this, seeing mm. as um, Eleanor's been in the back of the car, mm. do you have a psychology or... I do. I think just if you're in the back trying to warm up Harry O'Brien, 
mm. just softly talking to him. If you want to give me a dice roll to see if you are able to kind of like bring him bring him back, like your old friends and maybe your yeah. soothing tones are, and blood-covered visage are just the <laughs> that's needed to, to calm him down. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, can I push it? Yeah, you can. Because it's a friend that I really care about and I just, I'm very concerned and just want him to be okay. A and tear a... rolls down on his cheek. Please oh. come back, O'Brien. I'm Harry. Blankets I would have your give first name strength. terms, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll say you can oh, wait, push if this. I... <laughs> if this goes wrong, <laughs> if it goes wrong, <laughs> my mind will snap. If it, go, if it goes wrong, I have a full a full plan on like how to. <laughs> oh, right. I, I think, but it's, I'm giving you a devil's bargain here. <laughs> Do it, Bryony. Uh. 62. That is a success. Oh, are you serious? Whoa. Yeah, I got 65. Oh my god. Wow. If it was psychoanalysis, I have one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think just over time, he begins to stop chanting and just sort of comes to, and suddenly, Harry, you're in this car. Uh, you're with your four friends. Oh, um, I made it out. They're all. Covered kind of blood. covered in blood, <laughs> but you suddenly realize, like, oh, you're 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 cold, and you're missing a shoe, oh, and shit. you can see these runes on your body that are glowing, really brightly. What happened? Well, we Harry, we're in trouble. Where are we going? We're and a monster attacked us, uh, but I found out where the juice comes from. This okay. is the place. We're gonna go get some more juice? I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> this might be our last juice, Harry. Oh. I know. I think they put something in the juice. Oh. The monster, it came out of Pike. Oh, ripped him apart. God. Yeah, the monster. Oh. He had the same marks we have on us. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's go. I'm ride or die. I was saying I'm a little out of time, but I'm with you guys till the bitter end. Cool. So, what, what do you want to do? You're all just sat glowing in the, this car, Unless um, anyone... in the, the the parking lot of this uh, this warehouse. So, something has occurred to me. Unless anyone has a better idea, we we literally knock on the door. We say we're from Harmon and Sons Confectionery Shop. We pretend like we're in in the know. We know what's going on. We tell them Pike sent us, and they let us in. We have a chat. We see what's going on here. You don't think they're gonna notice the glowing runes and the fact we're covered in blood and I'm missing a shoe? <laughs> I mean, oh, the shoe is really gonna tip them off. <laughs> <laughs> That's the giveaway, really, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> you you guys aren't covered in blood. You could do it. I guess. I, I can lend like, you my shoe. I think okay. my jaw is broken, though. <laughs> yeah, like you just go. Jay is definitely bleeding profusely from the the face. All right, uh, I'll go. I'll go. You guys just cover me, I guess. You're, you're missing your shirt. Uh, you look uh, like a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. My clothes are covered in blood. Oh, God. I'm also quite a lot smaller than you. Um, I don't think my clothes will fit. Is there a chance that there happens to be a boiler suit or some change of clothes in the boot of this car? Just for doing work in the garden or around the house. He was transporting it from his old house to his new apartment. Realistically, would an accountant have... Well, you see, I... I was having an affair with my secretary. <laughs> and, uh, we would obviously take. He's got a go bag. I've got a go bag. <laughs> so it's my boots. Give me, a, give, me a luck, give me a luck roll. It's basically and her bra <laughs> under, the, under the seat. That's what you're saying. <laughs> right, you can dress up as his. Yeah, give me a luck roll. Oh. It's 54, and my luck is 56. Yeah, you As know luck what? would have it. So, I was going on. A, I was planning to go away on a jolly this weekend, and I already had my bags packed. There you go. I'll yeah, squeeze into I, I am only it. size fifty, and uh, um, I'm size fifty-five. Oh so yeah, pretty you close. squeeze into it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you give him. You give him some fresh, some fresh clothes. Oof. All right. And uh, all right. So the plan was I was going to go and present this. Uh, and since I really don't know much about what's happened, I can present an even more innocent face. And I should be like, yeah, I'm here from Harmon and Sons, here for the new delivery. You know what I'm saying? Pike sent you to pick up the special shipment of juice. Okay, Pike sent me, looking for the good stuff. That's what I'm going to go for. But more charming. 
yeah, you you can uh, head on over the rest of you glowing in your car. They're hiding <laughs> in the car. Yeah. And I mean, you're going to need like a few layers of clothes. Yeah, I'm going to layer up a little bit. Like a, like two shirts, a blazer, a waistcoat. Yeah, <laughs> to, like, really or, or a jacket or something. <laughs> yeah, you're able to basically kind of mask, yeah. uh, mask this look. The worst of the glowing. Yeah. And right, I want I want a luck roll. I want to. Uh, that is forty, and my luck is fifty-five. Okay. Oh no, my luck is sixty. As you make it to the door, and you go to knock on it, fully covered up, you've gotten rid of these lights, and you are approaching this this building. I want a listen roll. Okay. From you. That is a eleven. Eleven. Which is a super success. An extreme yeah. success. Mm. Through this, like these heavy wooden doors, you can hear people inside. Um, there's definitely noise in doors. Um, it's now maybe 10, 11, 11 o'clock, maybe coming coming close to midnight. And you can hear people. You can hear people chanting. You can do, hear, I, do I recognize the chant? You recognize the chant. The we give ourselves to the key and the gate. Our sacrifice opens the door. All become one, all become dust. Our souls shall bridge the present and the past. And you hear people just saying that over and over again from deeper inside the building. And this building, describe what it looks to me from the outside, please. You're right next to Lake Michigan. Um, and you're a few warehouses away from the actual uh, front where ships would be coming in, loading, unloading, stuff like that. Oh, sorry. Um, so big, big door. Really big, this big, gigantic double door inset into that is a smaller door off to uh, one side a staircase that goes up that looks like it would be going into a second second floor or a mezzanine in this in any this windows warehouse. on the outside not from ground level like this is kind of a rougher of area course yeah you don't they, want people busting in yeah the fairly well secured that you right. can't really and what is the door the double door made of like the the biggest oh yeah like wood wood i'm gonna go back to the car guys you can hear chanting inside. Same deal as last time. I'm saying, smash through those double doors with the car and blow this place to kingdom come. Well, this car wasn't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> to my car. <laughs> you can ram your own car into the warehouse if you want to. It could be a, it could be a tax write-off, all right? It's a tax write-off, quite clearly. I, I don't know if... In cult investigations are part of my business plan. Well, they are now. <laughs> Look, if we don't do something about this soon, you're not going to be able to drive a car. Oh my god, you're right. And I'll tell you what, if I make money from my juice song, which I think is going to be a hit, <laughs> I'll reimburse you for your car. Okay, how about we all do the chant? You know, we, we go... And <laughs> Join in with the cultists? Sacrifice opens the door, and you know, the other ones... And we do want to open the door. Yeah, but, but we don't want to open... <laughs> The what? door to whatever they're chanting about. We just no, want to no, open just, this we door. We just pretend that we're like you were earlier. We go in there. Yeah, but then we'll be stuck in there with those cultists. Well, we can sneak off on the side. I'm you've sure. changed your tone, buddy, <laughs> from earlier this evening when you were all about kicking ass, and now you're like, oh, maybe we should join the cultists. What the hell is going on here? All right, Harry. Let's, let's drive through that I'm door. Just saying, can we trust these assholes? They're going to summon more of these cockroaches. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should break in. In a quieter way. Ah, it's up to you guys. I, I need to find some kind of cure for this. And I, I don't think barging in, alerting everyone, getting surrounded by crazy cultists is a good All right. Good solution. Okay. I guess it could be quite good to have the car to get away again as yes, well. Yes, I would like to be able to get away. I was thinking of this more like a suicide because <laughs> I've, I've had a bad evening <laughs> but sure okay we'll do it your way we could do some combination of both surely right I'll smash yeah. through the main double doors and you guys sneak around the back yeah, we've done too chance. much distraction play tonight already let's just let's just see if we can sneak in who, who can okay. who can pick a lock oh uh, I've, I've picked a few locks in my time alright let's go pick this lock come on ref okay well we'll Park the car in a way that makes it easy to get out. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you are parking your car, there is like quite a large truck in this uh, um, loading bay area mm. as well that is uh, just hanging out there. 
Mm. If you were very worried about your car. Oh, I'm going to go have a look. What's in the back of this truck? TNT? God, it's actually all the guns. <laughs> it's uh, the uh, truck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, it's, you know... Just a um, truck, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like most of the stuff would have been unloaded. There might be um, some planks and bits of wood, stuff that they're not as worried about getting okay. pinched well, tonight. Since I can't pick a lock, mm. I'll be ready in the truck. And if anything goes wrong, you give me the signal oh. and I'll drive in there. And that way, nothing has to happen to your car, Rafe, okay? <laughs> okay. I much prefer that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, do you have a mechanical engineering role or anything like that? I can do... Mech repair is not great, my driving is not great. Okay, well... But we... I can listen to the engine really well and say, oh, it's <laughs> oh, the That's belt. how you make it start. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the rest of you, are you heading... Yeah, I'm going to try and, I guess, pick the lock. So there's the, the front door or the sort of staircase on the side of the building that goes up onto the second layer. Like, where would you most like to, to go? Which sort of entrance are you pushing into. What do you prefer? Well, I think upstairs, probably. Okay. Go upstairs. Cool. We'll check the door before we try and pick it. The doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, they're locked. It's definitely... <laughs> okay, you'll pick it. Okay. I'm going to try and pick the lock. For some reason, I'm quite good at that. I must be a little bit shady. Hmm. Shady You're boy. You're like the lock-picking lawyer. I am the lock-picking accountant. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I get a 40, which is a success. Ah, oh, it's not super well designed, mm. although it's a kind of heavy door. Just It's just an old-fashioned tumbler lock, you see. I've, uh, I've dealt with these before. Picking locks, it's like doing your accounts. <laughs> uh, it's very just boring. It's just rows and columns, you see. You've got to get down the row <laughs> and then up the column, and then it pops open. Uh, yeah, you... <laughs> Successfully, you managed to um, get in through this this door and push your way in. And it's fairly, fairly dark inside here. But you are on this sort of second, like, mezzanine area of this warehouse that it feels like this was installed, that goes about halfway the, the you know, total floor space of that the warehouse would be. And there is an internal staircase that goes down, a small office type area, um, and it looks like there is some kind of um, like machinery in here uh, that you may or may not recognize. Um, definitely, Jay, you would you would see this as like this is used for distilling, but it looks more complicated than a regular a regular sill, and it seems to extend down through the floor to the, the ground level but there is stuff going on up here as well it just seems like very over engineered to make gin or whiskey or anything like that and this floor is completely completely empty you don't see any other people but you can now definitely hear the sound of chanting pretty loudly um, it sounds like a bunch of a bunch of voices are all chanting, and uh, you can't see them from where you are, but somewhere deeper down within the warehouse itself, uh, you can hear hear a lot of these voices. Can we see lights on in any rooms ahead? Uh, so upstairs, um, there's a little kind of like foreman's office type thing, um, but there is no lights up here whatsoever. But downstairs, there are definitely, there is some kind of illumination. There's sort of this glowing light, but you couldn't place what it is. I wonder if all the other fellas down there are glowing... Looks like this is some apparatus where they make this, the juice. Yes, this is the juice factory. I don't like this. I'm worried there's dozens of them. Maybe we can find someone on their own and question them. Oh. Maybe we can find some books or records to find out what's happening. Preferably a set of accounts dating back at least five years. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really very useful if it's less than five years. Yeah. You know, I need to extrapolate future earnings, really. <laughs> we can check out the foreman's office. Hmm. If that would help. Yes, yeah, so let's have a rummage. I know you love your files. <laughs> Why not? Maybe there'll be keys in there as well for all the locks. Uh, yeah, so you, you, you make it into the foreman's office and this does definitely look like um, it is like a working, a working warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, that there's 
paperwork and uh, just journals and ledgers that stuff is actually getting shipped in and out of here. That there is the import of uh, mm. sweets and Mrs. Fanny's chocolate cigars or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there anything had. like odd imports that's coming? Anything that's coming in that's like weird? A lot of these books, you can match them up to what you were seeing mm. um, over at uh, the barrel. But the trail of where the juice comes from mm. definitely ends here. You would infer juice is made in this building. And there's no, they're not obviously importing anything that is used to make the juice. There's no like exotic, distant not stuff. Nothing that like strikes in the alarm bells. Mm. But it seems weird. Like where, where are they getting these ingredients? Mm. Um, you can see that, okay, right, though, there's, they've brought in barrels. Right. So they're definitely barreling it here. But definitely it seems like nothing's coming in to mm, actually make it. Yeah. Are they like keys? Uh, yeah, hooks? you can d- definitely. I'd say you can find find a set of a uh, big set of keys that would work for the doors. Um, you know, potentially into a skylight in the the building. Yeah. You can I find got, what might be a truck key? Uh, ooh. Give me a luck roll. See if you can get a truck key. One. Oh. One. <laughs> There's a whole oh truck. God. So weirdly, in the 1920s, they made this like magic skeleton key that operates every vehicle and you can drive all of them at once with this. I'm going to wave out the window and throw it out the window. I'm going to... <laughs> he just threw just a key. Just waved at me and then threw something. I mean... Yeah. You're going to want like that. Um, with that success, it lands in the ignition <laughs> of the truck. <laughs> and I'm like, it, it was, you were that gotcha. good at finding the key that somehow it loops around through the window and <laughs> goes inside. Oh my god. Uh, was so good. Uh, I, I just love the idea of me sitting there in the truck and you wave and then throw something at me and I'm like, what? What are you doing? It's it lands the key on, for the truck. Well, lands on the bonnet. It? Yeah, but now it pings in. It's, that's amazing. Yeah. What a guy. He can lock. He can pick locks and he can land keys in locks. No problem. It's so guy. good. You should, why are you wasting your time with accounts when you're this kind of <laughs> lock wizard? Um, <laughs> just absolutely love it. Uh, yeah. Pow, you've, yeah, you've got you've got this magic key. Well, but... you know, it's because the capitalists often use locks oh, to chain the masses. Very. <laughs> so it's the first step to freedom oh, is lock picking. Okay, I like that. It's uh, it's one my addendum to Marx's Communist Manifesto. Actually, I'm hoping I'm hoping it'll be added in the next edition. It's right. the revolutionaries lock picking. As <laughs> as you're important. saying that, the cultists kind of burst into the verse <laughs> about we give ourselves to the key and the gate, <laughs> blood sacrifice. <laughs> open the door. Um, yeah, they are talking about uh, keys, keys as well. Ooh, um, at the same time, key theme. Is there any sort of like, um, like hooks that have boiler suits on or anything like mm. that? Yeah, I think you could you could easily get some, find some overalls, or there'll be some lockers in here. And if you want to give me a look roll to any, see any how... cultist robes, or mm, well, that's just it. <laughs> I failed. Okay, so yeah, you. It looks like there's quite a lot of people's clothes in here. It seems like a bunch of people have left their like street clothes in here that they all had recently gotten changed. It's one of those rituals. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, like strange masks lying around. No, no. Uh, Are there a load of other keys with the truck key? <laughs> <laughs> no, you've, there's there's a bunch of clothes here as if. Um, People had mm. gotten changed to be on shift or something like that. Mm. But there's not only street clothes, but there are kind of overalls and Okay. Yeah, if we put the overalls like on, then if we get if anyone catches us, we might be able to blend in. Yeah, I'm gonna change into overalls. Ben, if I was if I turned in the office wearing your clothes and you didn't know me, we'd just be like, well, you well, wearing my clothes. No, 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 it's the overalls, not the street clothes. Oh right. And also your clothes are covered in blood, so this yeah. probably would help. Yeah. yeah. There. <laughs> but you may be just wearing their street clothes and they'd be like, <laughs> seems like I must know him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's I mean ben. I, I've played Hitman. If you turned up in Ben's clothes, I'd be like, Ben, you finally turned up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love the new haircut. <laughs> that, is, that is how it works. <laughs> oh, I look like a proper working man now. <laughs> Oh, my brow is sweaty already. <laughs> wow. 
okay, no, you've 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 got changes of clothes. The you are kind of looking look normal. As you are getting changed out of your dirty, blood-covered clothes, these runes are as bright as they've ever been. Mm. Um, the, from the outside, it almost looks like in that foreman's office, which like has some windows super high up, 20, 30 feet up, it almost is like a floodlight is shining out of there, how bright mm. these runes are on those guys. So they, have they suddenly brightened more? They're just... they're. They've been slowly and steadily increasing in brightness. Mm, okay, we're not going to be able to sneak around. You can sort of fairly mask them. Um, with the overalls? Yeah, with the overalls. You can damp them down, but as you kind of like take your top off, it is the brightest they've they've been so far. I, th- I think we're running out of time. Mm. What should we do? I'm scared, guys. Right, I'm really that's scared. It. <laughs> oh no, what Putting have I done? First, and I'm hitting the accelerator. This is, I, I'm worried I'm going to burst any minute with this light. I'm going straight through the front doors, the double doors in this car, in this truck. Okay. Uh, I want I want a drive roll to see how good this is. It's a disaster. <laughs> 93. 93. And my drive is 20. How much hard is it to have? go straight into a wall? <laughs> I'm going to push it. <laughs> I, noticing that I'm swerving around, I floor, can barely drive. I put it into second, metal. and we floor it. Yeah, okay, this is going to be... It's almost as bad as the first time. <laughs> it's 84. I'm now traveling at extremely high speed, out of control, 84. presumably. 84. Had you used up all of your juice? Uh, no, I have two juices. Oh, man. Well, you're welcome to roll your juice. Still terrible. That's an 84 again. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's destiny. I have one juice left. I'll save it for going through the windshield and landing on a mattress or a bed of feathers or something. Okay. Well, right. On. So you push the roll. You were accelerating towards the the door. The double door. And then there was a moment of you being like, huh, maybe I should be going significantly faster. And it is absolute pedal to the metal. You are going straight towards this building. The three of you upstairs, the double door is kind of directly below you from where this um, foreman's office is. And you just see the (laughs) the headlights of the truck come on and that begin to... Rev and rev, do some kind of rad 1920s truck wheel spin, <laughs> and then start blazing towards the building. You have a moment to decide if you want to do anything, um, and then we are going into. I'm going to run into the next room that's further away from the truck. Yeah, so the rest of this is sort of uh, basically just a big flat kind of wooden wooden floor mm. outside of this kind of. Um, loose wooden foreman's office. Everyone up here looks pretty, pretty twitchy. Um, maybe where all of this kind of big, uh, big distilling machinery is kind of looks like it's coming up through the floor. Looks like maybe the best supports are by that. Mm. That's your best guess. I just uh, say, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and kapow, um, you have Harry O'Brien driving this uh, large truck you absolutely smash through through these doors. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you um, 100% go through those. Uh, windscreen smashing around you, blowing these doors open. And you are on the ground floor of this warehouse that it is full of these boxes just dotted all around. Some of them full of, uh, uh, full of bottles. Uh, there are barrels and um, all kinds of things just scattered about this place. And... In the distance, you can make out like this faint glowing light. Uh, you can't quite see what's happening, but you hit some kind of heavy piece of machinery and the truck flips. Okay. You have danced into something that was large and heavy. All the other things were coming, like just being blasted out of the way. The truck has flipped over. Um, you can take. It feels like it's going to be pretty bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you a... Belt on. Uh, well, I've got great dexterity. And as we know, in the 1920s, the theory regarding car crashes was no seatbelt, so you would be thrown clear of the wreckage <laughs> and land safely, which I was will... actually what they used to think. You're going to take seven points of damage <laughs> from... Very close to perishing. That's an injury. 
Uh, that is going to be an injury. Thanks, Can you <laughs> give me a, a constitution roll? That's not great. Ooh, Past it. Nice. Just a standard. Okay. And uh, do you want to be thrown clear? I mean, there's plenty I of think... glass bottles to land on. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, like... I guess I'll just hopefully be somewhere in the truck ensconced. Oh, so maybe you can land in a vat of juice. Yeah, <laughs> my, my dream. <laughs> have plowed through this building and uh, you have smashed through the windscreen. Uh, or no, smashed into the windscreen. The truck is flipped over onto its side. You have been absolutely rattled around, um, having a horrific time. Glass has absolutely sprayed over your entire body, leaving you with horrific cuts all over your face and chest. Gonna say you're gonna have some broken broken bones here. Okay, what um, are we looking at? I think I think just a good broken arm from where the truck has kind of crashed down on its yeah. side. Um, maybe a few broken ribs. You so are broken in broken arm. Um, really, really bad shape. And I'll just write broke. I'll just I'll just write broken arm. From where the truck has sort of come to a halt, you are lying there. Um, the engine spluttering and beginning to die, the, the lights on the front of the truck flashing uh, as they are sort of chugging like on and off. And directly in front of you is this ring of these sort of half dozen cultists, like maybe a few less than that. There's sort of like maybe eight of them stood in a circle. Um, and on the ground is this circle of rooms and they are all chanting and stood in the middle of this circle you can see this central person wearing these blue robes and now that you you look around and there's more of this light you can see these angular shapes that were in your vision before were crates and these sparkling gems were actually just bottles on shelves around the place you are exactly where you saw that vision earlier mm. and they are still chanting, but one or two of them begin to kind of peel away, um, trying to continue the chant. But this woman in the center, um, who's wearing these robes that you saw earlier, she chants with even more fervor. And this glowing blue sort of misty light that is being pulled out of all of them is beginning to coalesce in a ball above them. And you're lying there coughing up blood really badly injured and you begin to see where these runes on your body are glowing this sort of faint misty oily light is sort of like smokily getting pulled towards the central Damn. central orb uh, the three of you who are upstairs mm. um, you braced for impact um, the truck hit the building blasted open the doors directly below you. You've lost sight of it, but the entire of the floor has given like a hard lurch as you would guess that the truck has plowed straight through some kind of supporting beam and it feels like this whole top floor could come down in any second. Uh, you are not too far to run down the stairs on the mm. outside. There is an internal staircase as well. Also, you can begin to see, and I think it's going to be sanity rolls, uh, probably for uh, Eleanor and Raphael, because you can see this smoky mm. light begin to be pulled out of your bodies, and it looks just like what was happening to uh -oh. Pike. Ooh, I got a 22. I, 85, Ooh. I fail. Ooh, okay, Ben, you can lose one. And Bryony, you can lose seven. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god. You might be going temporarily insane. You, this light begins coming off your body. And this smoky uh, tendrils, and you're just watching these two, because you don't quite know the impact of what this smoke means and then all of a sudden Eleanor just snaps turns and starts looking at this coalescing ball of light and she begins to chant yeah. and slowly walk towards it and begins walking down this staircase 
towards uh, where this stuff is going on. Sacrifice opens the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, we have to stop the chanting, or we're all going to explode into horrible bug monsters. <laughs> Good summary exposition, guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I'll give you, um, actually, can you give me a, a power roll? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So you are fully just chanting and walking towards as more of this light pours off your body in these disgusting kind of greasy oily tendrils, and it is beginning to spin and pool. Can I still be smoking my cigarette? Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> you can take breaks to uh, smoke the cigarette. <laughs> are there any, like, are there any, like, wrenches or, like, crowbars or, like, monkey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could easily find an improvised thing. There's there's toolboxes, there's okay. splinters I, of wood. I pick up there's... one with a bit of weight to it, mm. and I chuck it to... Uh, um, old Raph. I, I grab it, but I'm also going to look for whatever I think is the most flammable spirit out of all the gin and whiskey and distillery stuff there is everywhere. So it doesn't look like there's as much up here, but, there are but definitely downstairs. I'm going to make a Molotov. You don't even know how flammable the juice is, actually. No, is it even true. alcoholic? Did we ever know? So upstairs where you are, there don't seem to be a lot of bottles and stuff up here, but there is the top of this still of the juice that... Yeah. You've got materials around you I, could do. I have no idea if the juice is alcoholic or flammable, so I'm going to play it safe and stick with, like, if I can find a bottle, if I can see a bottle of gin or whiskey or whatever I can see, I'll take the highest percentage available, I'll find an oily rag, and I mm. feel like just throwing a Molotov into the chanting circle might clear it out and distract them and cool. stop them chanting. So I'm going to say from upstairs... Uh, there's none of these, no bottles okay. are stored up I'll here. I'll go downstairs. If you, go, if you head down, there's going to take you a little bit of time to find um, find the materials, but you can easily if, fashion Or even a, if I can find some a, fuel for the generator or some engine oil mm. or anything that would work for it. Yeah. Tur like, I don't know, if there's some kind of paint remover that's flammable or whatever they would have in this warehouse. Yeah, have a little look around. Yeah, we can easily easily sort that out. It's going to take you a few, a few moments. Cool. So, Che, you... Yeah, I'm just following um, Ellie with a... With a, a monkey wrench. She just is held down by my side. I've got like my sleeves rolled up. <laughs> I'm just ready to, to club some of these cultists. She is heavily chanting. And as you get down, you get a better view of you are back in that room where you had that vision earlier. And you can see this coalescing ball of ball of light. And Raphael has just run past you looking for something. Um, I want a sanity check seeing this gigantic ball of light um, as it's kind 24. of spooky weird. Great. Uh, lose lose a point. Seem but, weirder shit than that. Uh, yeah, you had a rough a rough day. Big ball of light. Harry O'Brien, what are you doing? I'm gonna throw something at this ball of light. Anything. Maybe it'll just delay it, distract it. Or maybe I hoist something at the cultist lady. I'll chuck something at her with my good arm. With my one good arm. I'll grab a bottle of juice or whatever and just smash it at her head and hope to distract her. Just all. throw yeah. a thing. I think uh, because you're really really badly injured. This is going to be a throw roll, okay. but I think it's going to be a hard throw roll okay. from where you are. You're on the your side in this yep. truck cab. I'm going to use my last juice because mm. I only have one left. That's it. I'm out of juice now. All juiced out. Do I get, I get one of these? Mm. Isn't that right? That is a, a very good success. That's a three. A three? Yeah. Extreme Ooh, and my throw is 40, so that was an extreme success. Oh, wow. With the power of the juice! Mm. Uh, you throw this bottle and smash. It smashes on her face, kind of ripping her robes. <laughs> and it looks like it's done a horrific gash on her. And she's bleeding heavily. Like, it is sliced through her eye absolutely torn her up. Oh god, I feel bad. <laughs> she just does not stop. Okay. She continues continues to chant. Can we get a luck roll to see how good you are at finding stuff down? Uh, this is for Oh, sorry for me. Raphael. 45. That's pass. Ooh, so yeah, you you can tell me what you have looked for and what you have found. I've looked for anything flammable. And as I'm scurrying around, I literally find a sign that's like, warning, flammable. <laughs> 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 like a warning sign. I'm like, great, that'll do. Mm. Um, and I find like an oily rag, like a mechanic had been using. Mm. And like I stuff it in, I light it, 
it goes up immediately because it's all greased up. Yeah, I'll say it's, then, you've, you've, uh, it's going to take this time to have made this, but you mm -hmm. have a primed Molotov cocktail. Amazing. Now, my throwing's not very good, and I know I've only got one shot. So basically what I'm going to do is run in there and smash it onto them well, rather than we'll, throw it. I think we'll give you a give you a second. I just want everyone to have a moment. Unfortunately, Eleanor is just walking just towards this circle, yes, beginning to put your <laughs> arms out and join as the other cultists are there and just chanting away. You've, you're deep, deep in the juice. What are you doing um, over there, Che? You have your club. So no one's going for Harry or Raph. They're fine. They're, They're all undisturbed. The There's no cultists. It, no, no cultists like peel off to fight them or anything. So you don't know that. So I can't see Harry from where I am. No, no. As far as you can see, that you see the the smoking truck on its side, um, which there, is a good uh, twenty feet from the actual main circle where this is all going on. Um, I'll let you uh, give me a spot hit roll. I just want to. I just want to see what I'm. See what I can see. No, Ooh. Nine. Nine. Ooh, yeah. very good. Okay, you can see that there is a just a little bit beyond from where Raphael, you can see him kind of edging himself up to like run on in. There is a cultist kind of hiding, ready to ambush him, mm. sort of behind behind a post. Perfect. And also through the skylight, because a nine is a very good success, you can see there is a big shape on the roof. Something's moving around up there. Uh, so what do you want to do? We're going for that hidden cultist. We're going for... He's going to get clubbed. Yeah, cool. You can charge over and make an attack. 94. Oh! 94. <laughs> <laughs> can you push it? You're quite good at brawling, right? Uh, You've got a broken jaw. Mm. I have got a broken jaw. You're not hitting him with that, though. Sure. You're <laughs> just trying to bite him, then. <laughs> sure, let's, let's push that bad boy. 54. Still not enough. You're going to try and do this, but it wasn't... It wasn't Raphael this guy was planning to ambush. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> he was purposely waiting, keeping his back to you, and in a heartbeat, he turns around and goes underneath your lunge, and he plunges a dagger deep into your ribcage. Uh, you can take four points of damage. I'm on one. Okay, Ooh. as this guy grabs you by the arm, slides this knife inside you, and he is there, just chanting in your ear. We give, we give ourselves, ourselves to the, to the key, key and the gate. Our sacrifice, sacrifice opens, opens the, the door. door. He's just saying that to you as he holds this knife, slowly beginning to twist it in the in your body. I um, chant along with him. Ooh! <laughs> uh, okay. We're going to stick to the plan and and just run in there and smash it onto the the lead cultist in the middle. My my dream is that this is enough of a threat to like scatter them all. They don't want to be in a room that's on fire. Mm. And with the leader hopefully distracted from chanting as well, maybe that'll break the spell. Okay, great. But, um, Give I'm not, me... not good at throwing, so it's going to have to be like a point blank smash on her. I'm a skinny nerd. I never got good at throwing. I think if you want to run in and be in the center of the circle, if you give me a luck roll, it will be whether or not you catch fire. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh 28. I'm lucky. Cool. You run up. Um, it's actually half my luck. Oh, very good. You run to the center of this circle, the circle, center of the mm. circle, twenty feet across, maybe, um, with this lady who is bleeding horrifically. You can see her exposed eyeball from this mm. smash that happened on her face. Um, you blast the blast this bottle down, and it engulfs her in flame. It engulfs a bunch of these people have caught fire, and um, whatever you had found. Um, Man, only having one warning label of highly <laughs> flammable feels like that was not enough because this thing has gone, <laughs> absolutely gone up 
her robes are beginning to catch fire. People around are catching fire. Mm -hmm. But they still do not move. Oh, no. And they I didn't are... want to kill anyone. I wanted to just scare them all off. Oh. Well, they are uh, burning. That's on them, then. If they and don't want to get out of the fire. They are... <laughs> that, that's not on my uh, hand. <laughs> Standing there. Uh, as you do that, the, that crash of your glass bottle is mimicked mm. by a crash through the skylight of this colossal bug creature no. has smashed through the sort of where there are skylights in this warehouse and is scurrying down the wall uh, towards you guys. I'm going to give you all another action and then we're going to see what happens. Wait, I control this bug. Kill the cultist lady. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> a little drum beat. Yeah. you did it with music before. I can whistle. <laughs> Because it's worked. I know the tune. I'm going to play the tune, whistle it, or sing it, oh, and try and get the bug to go after the cultist lady. Ooh. I'm still a little bit fucked up. You know, I've, I've lost my mind this evening. <laughs> Drunk a lot of juice. This is the best plan I've got, Tom. Okay. Whistle at it. <laughs> uh, you can... Uh... The maddest... The... Okay, if this is what one quarter is doing, you can... Well, that's useless. <laughs> Uh, Our last action of the game. I'm almost I'm dead. I'm gonna whistle. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna whistle at the, the monster from bet. beyond. Yeah, but I, I, I was controlling it. I was controlling it earlier. Yeah. What, what do you want me to roll? <laughs> give, me a, give me a dice roll. Uh, roll this against your music. Oh no! Oh no! That's good for music. That's a, I've, I've succeeded in a music. Mm. Cool. You we whistle at this creature. Um, you try and sing the juice. You try and hum anything and. The creature, it wasn't, it wasn't protecting you. It was, but it was keeping you alive. Mm. Because you have a purpose. Oh God, okay. So other people, um, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, we give ourselves to. <laughs> I'm, yeah. um, I'm gonna try and pull Eleanor away from the fire because I could tell she's not of sound mind and I don't want her to run Ooh. into the fire I started. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Is she gonna resist me like, Pulling her away. Give me a power roll, Eleanor. Success. I think the, the smash, the flames, the fire, um, you have kind of joined this circle and you are stood at this horrific scene of people are on fire but continuing to charm. Gigantic Bugulon is uh, thrashing around in the background. And um, now, Harry O'Brien is whistling the juice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you snap to, and you are looking at the terrifying, blood-covered, burning face of this uh, this lady who is chanting in front of you. What do you want to do? <laughs> can, can I go back and say it was, it was safe there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Reject reality. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can I look around and just try and, like, whoever I can spot of these uh, three soonest, I'll go towards them. Immediately, there's the open arms of uh, Raphael, mm -hmm. and you can, like, sort of back it up. As you are pulling, like, pulling away from there, the smoke and light coming off of your bodies yeah. is reaching an absolute climax. Um, <laughs> I don't want to turn into jelly. <laughs> uh, I think um, uh, currently knife inside being chanted at it's gonna be Jay you're the last um, <laughs> I just cough blood out my mouth <laughs> oh, God. we give ourselves to the key and the gate sacrifice opens the door you give enough as well I'm just gonna walk, to, walk, walk, walk towards the middle hand in hand with this cultist that stabbed me the, yeah, they do not resist you at all. Um, wow. And yeah, if you want to give yourself over willingly, 100% you can make that happen. I'm doing it. And you begin the charm. I think it's going to be... I think we're going to need a power roll from Can't you. Can't believe the whistle thing didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you crack. make me a power roll there? 51. Okay. Their power is 50. Oh, oh use a luck. I can afford one luck, right? Yeah, you can um, luckily give yourself over to the cultists. <laughs> no, in this situation, I'm going to say you you're, you have given yourself over, 
but... You don't want to pass that. <laughs> well, I think meta ways, um, if you had have committed all of your power to it, this ritual would be donezo. Oh. <laughs> um, and... But I held back a little bit. The, there was this tiny bit of resisting. Um, I'm going to give you each one last, uh, one one last, last round, time. and then we are ritual complete. Okay. You have a little cry. Um, the, the woman is like beginning to collapse, but still on fire, still bleeding, her skin burning and blackened, but this billowing, mm. billowing smoke coming off of her, coalescing into this ball. Uh, one, one last round I'm from any dead of anyway. you. Okay. I've so, got an idea. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna grab one of these shards of glass. Oh my god! <laughs> Ooh. Wow! I'm at, I can see some logic in that. Give me a power roll to see uh, if you can have the, the. I can use a little luck. I have fifty. I've rolled fifty-six. I have fifty-five power. Oh, Ooh, you missed it by one as one well. Else. I will use some luck just to cut my throat. Strength of will yourself to be able to do it. You hesitate for a second. One of these broken pieces of glass. You do that, and the light falters a second. This coalescing orb and the 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 bug monster seems furious about this. So do I not kill myself? No, you have. You have killed. You have oh, killed I have yourself. Killed myself. <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh, successfully. Rip Harry. Over to uh, Ellie and Rolf. Remember, I said I'd promise to kill any one of you, and you would promise to kill me before the bugs came out. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for you, Shay. <laughs> I'm going to whack Shay with the wrench that he gave me. <laughs> I'll not let you turn into a bug, brother. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shay's almost dead as well. Cool. Um, Hit him in the make, jaw. <laughs> make me a make me a roll. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. That's a ninety six. Ninety six. So I will. Um, I'll push my luck. I'll really wind it up. <laughs> okay. If this goes wrong, yeah. it's going really badly. That, wrong. It's already going really badly wrong. Um, I feel like there's not much left to lose so at this point. So if you point. miss this, you won't be allowed to spend luck on your push dice roll. Oh no. It's a ten. A ten. Um, <laughs> great, you can crack him in the head with an improvised weapon. That's a hard success. Uh, that's a D eight worth of damage. Um. Oh, it's a one. Luckily, he he's has only got one. one. Oh yeah, there's one. <laughs> <laughs> um, make me a Constitution roll. If you fail, um, because you've taken a major wound, you die. Fifteen. Okay. Oh. Uh, hit him. Blood comes from his head. Uh, you hit him, but he is chanting away, having a merry old time. Have, have I given myself up? So am I? I done so. You're just chanting now, forever. <laughs> I think we'll. I think maybe we'll just let Ellen, Eleanor have. Like, what do you want to do? Um, I'm gonna run at on fire, melting face lady, and just shove her into the ball of light. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Because I'm so horrified by everything <laughs> else that's going on. Everything else that is going on. He's stabbing himself in the neck. He's clobbering him. <laughs> okay, make me uh, give me give me some kind of dice roll. I want um like a, a strength or a brawl or a size roll I'd even take. Just whatever is best. I'm um, gonna go strength. Just full on barrel in there. Uh, oh, pass. A pass? So you are going to get hurt in this process. Because she is on fire. <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> Very reasonable. I'm allergic to fire, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> My only weakness. You grab her, you throw her into this ball of light, and she still continues to charm. And her body kind of like hits the sort of event horizon of this ball of light, and it begins to age heavily, but on fire, blood pouring out of her. This is an absolute red hot, red hot mess. Um, I'm gonna want a dodge roll from you because as you do this, and as she hits this ball and begins to get absorbed into it, um, the 
bug monster is going to attack you. Am I allowed to juice it? Uh, you can juice it. Um, make a dodge roll, do a juice. <gasps> oh no, I missed by one. Can I spend a luck? Um, I don't think it's going to matter at this stage because uh -oh. the bug <laughs> has critically hit you. <laughs> On a crit, it's just going to do max damage. Um, you can take 12 points of damage. Give me a constitution roll. 44, uh, 75, so pass. Pass. You are hit by this creature. The insect has seen what you're trying to do. You've pushed her into this ball of light. You are hit by the bug, thrown off to one side, crashing into a wall. And then everything goes to hell. The woman... She stops chanting and she begins screaming. She begins screaming as she is sucked through time. Um, she is now existing in uh, every moment of time for the next billions of years. And it is her experience of that that you are hearing in real time yourselves. And it is endless agony and screams. Um, it is absolutely horrific. Hey, that. Then this ball of light explodes. It blows all of you completely off your feet, um, taking off half of the roof of this building. And for a moment, you saw this gigantic creature in the sky that was sort of waiting. It was here, but it wasn't here yet. Not yet, but mm. it was here in the future, but it wants to be here now. Mm. And you had just closed off its only way of making it into this place. Mm. You have successfully stopped. Brian. Wow, well done. The ritual. <laughs> you saved us all. <laughs> well, I'm dead. So... <laughs> Sometime later you come to, and uh, this building has been absolutely decimated. The walls exploded out. There is no longer any remnants of these cultists, of this giant insect. Uh, it is all gone. You sort of pull your guys' selves together, broken, injured, absolutely bloodied, and you find the, the dead body of your dear friend Harry possibly sacrifice himself for nothing but but, <laughs> but you 100% know that if it hadn't have been for him mm. sacrificing himself at the last moment he bought us another round of time right the door needed its keys mm. and with one less key they were in a bunch of trouble and the as long as you'll live you'll always remember remember him oh, rip Harry Especially when his hit song, The Juice, comes on the radio. Oh. You'll always think we sing fondly. it at his funeral. Juice, juice, juice. <laughs> Harry did love the juice. <laughs> but you you make it away and, you know, some, some time after you meet again, you'll always pour out a drink for your friend mm. Harry. But you're never able to speak of this to anyone. The... Mm. Any evidence of what was happening has completely gone from the warehouse. The barrel has burnt down. And unfortunately for you all, without the juice to consume anymore, all of your careers just begin to slowly fade back into obscurity. And mm. the, you didn't have, you know, what it takes. And maybe it just wasn't your time. Mm. Wow. And that concludes... <laughs> Call of Cthulhu, everybody, and Fish in the Barrel. Uh, so you won, but it's a pretty bleak ending. <laughs> Quite the downer. Um, congratulations, everybody. 75% survival rate is pretty good. I'd yeah, pretty yeah, pretty nice. The mission of that type in Cthulhu. Yeah. Genuinely, if you had not have done the sacrifice, uh, it would have ended, it would oh, have ended wow. that round. Gosh. Um, well, Rip uh, Harry O'Brien. That's why communism never caught on. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, the Jackson Triangle, you know, no one's playing with that, are they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instantly, Rubik's Cube took over. They stole Bloody your idea. Oh, God, God, he stole your idea. Cubes! Uh, <laughs> uh, so that concludes Call of Cthulhu and the scenario Fish in a Barrel. 
You guys all played incredibly well. Would you like to say who you are and where people can find you? I'm Lewis from the Yogs Cast. Uh, you can find me on Games Night, Triforce, and of course, the main Yogs Cast YouTube channel. I'm Bryony. You can find me at Bryony K or listen to Kirsty and Bryony's Comfort Zone if you want to hear some crazy dream scenarios. I've been on that. He's been on that. So I've been he? on that. You've been on We need to get you. Yeah. <laughs> ben doesn't dream. Don't dream. <laughs> I'm a synth. Ben. <laughs> so like, Ben's already living his dreams. <laughs> Um, and I've been Ben. Um, I'm on the Games Night channel, YouTube slash Games Night, where we play miniature war games with a narrative twist. And I'm Pyrian Flax. You can find me on Twitch at Pyrian Flax uh, or at, in the Ogscast stuff like Games Night, like Mystery Quest or podcasts, the Triforce podcast as well, of course. And if you're a Dota fan, hello, how's it going? <laughs> and you already know who I am. <laughs> uh, and uh, I've been your keeper of arcane lore. Uh, mm. yeah. Tom, I play play this. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Until next time, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 And that completes our playthrough of Call of Cthulhu and the scenario Fish in a Barrel. Uh, I really, really hope you guys enjoyed seeing uh, like a slightly different pace of game. Uh, this one, real into the action. Uh, tons of fun to play. Always love Call of Cthulhu. Uh, if you want to know exactly what happened um, and see what all the players thought about this game, uh, you can right now. Uh, we've got a whole post-game video which is available to members. Supporting us through members or Patreon, uh, it helps to keep all of this stuff going and uh, allows us to keep making these goofy games. Uh, I hope you're enjoying. Until next time, everybody. Goodbye.